Hello friends and welcome to Sustainable Prepping, your home for fear-free emergency preparedness and a sustainable life. My name is Brecky and today we're going to be talking about three ways that you can start preparing not just for doomsday emergencies but for everyday hiccups in life. And most of these won't even cost you a dime, in fact they might just save you some money. If you're new here I want to say welcome, I am so glad you found my slice of the internet and if you're not new I want to say welcome back. Here at our channel we are all about teaching emergency preparedness without monetizing your fear because other channels they want you to be afraid because that gets them clicks here as you can tell because I'm still small I'm not here to monetize your fear I'm here to empower you to be prepared every day and for every crisis so let's talk about three of the ways that you can prepare for everyday hiccups you can prepare right now and you don't actually have to spend any money the last one does require a little bit of money but you'll see how you might not actually be spending any of that money the first way that we're going to talk about is checking your insurance now, those of you who have been following news here in the United States, you know that we just came out of Ian, Hurricane Ian, and there are still a lot of communities who are without power, who are without dedicated clean water, who are struggling, and a lot of homes in Florida, something like over half of the homes in Florida are not insured against flooding. A lot of insurance companies will split up flooding insurance versus rain damage or other water damage insurance or flooding only up to a certain level or past a certain level. There are all kinds of loopholes in your insurance for your home, for your renter's insurance, for your car, all of those sorts of deals. There's weird loopholes around fire damage, smoke damage, rain damage, water damage, all these different things and whether or not you have them covered. One of the ways that you can get prepared for a future emergency, particularly when we think about the increase of storms and the increase of magnitude of the storms that we have is by checking your insurance. Oh yes, I know, not sexy. Checking your insurance is not the sexiest thing that you can do to be prepared, but you can take 20 or 30 minutes today, click the link below or find another one and begin to see what your actual insurance covers and whether or not you should get flood insurance, fire insurance, etc. The last thing you want is to have survived a major catastrophe only to discover that through some loophole, your insurance company isn't gonna give you a dime towards repairing your home or your vehicle or restoring any property lost in a major catastrophe. Taking a little bit of time, spending an afternoon, making sure that all of your insurance is squared away, and if you don't have good insurance, investing in that good insurance, all of that can save you not just dollars down the road, which is important, but it can save you a lot of headache and heartache. So take some time, square away your insurance. It may not cost you any money and depending upon how deep you go, you may switch insurers or get some kind of bundling deal. You might end up saving some money. So take some time and square away your home insurance, renter's insurance, car insurance, and so forth so that you are prepared for all sorts of natural disaster emergencies. The second one is one that I recommend often, but it bears repeating, and that is digitize your most important documents. Have an encrypted file where you can get to your most important legal documents in the event of a major emergency. Now, I know there are some good recommendations for and against digitizing certain important legal documents, such as your insurance cards, your social security cards, passports, marriage licenses, etc. However, I think that having several of those digitized is an important tool in your emergency safety plan. Now, I wouldn't suggest just having them on any old photo album on your phone. I would put them directly into a encrypted server. I currently use the vault function on the Dropbox app, but there are other encrypted sources that you can use and maybe better suited for you depending upon what kind of documents you might be putting onto that server. But I think it's important to have access to those in the event that you are separated from wherever you have them stored. Let's say, for example, you keep them in a fireproof safe, a fire and flood proof safe in your house, but you have to evacuate and you don't have time to go and grab them out of that safe. We have one of those in our home. We then would not have access to prove that we're married, for example, or our identities. Uh, we might have our driver's licenses, but what if that you know, they just get ruined or confiscated, or what if we need two forms of ID? We might need to have proof of the identity of our children who don't have photo IDs yet. We might need to have proof of land that we own. We don't own any land currently, but you know, if we had a deed to a house or if we had um, access to property, maybe we have a secondary property we wanna prove that we own or that we are co-owners of or something. Those are all really, really important. Having access to like your bank account numbers, having access to, um, 
snapshots of your financial statements. Those can be really, really important in the event of a major natural disaster or any disaster where you are separated from your home base. Maybe you have to bug out for civil unrest and then you want to come back and reclaim a property where squatters have taken over. This is getting a little doomsday-y, but these are all reasons why you may wanna have documentation that can prove who you are, what you own, uh, who your kids are, who your spouse is or isn't. For example, if you have a divorce, you might wanna have divorce documentation, things like that. You hope to never need to dig into these encrypted files, but having them stored on your smartphone means that as long as you can get to the cloud and you can charge your smartphone, you have access to some of your key legal documents. So making sure that you have copies of at least one form of photo ID, your property deeds and titles, maybe insurance cards, and some information about your kids, maybe their birth certificates or other information to be able to identify them as your children. Those things should all be kept in an encrypted file. They do need to be an encrypted file so someone can't hack your phone and get right into them. And then you can have them, even if you evacuate, even if you leave, you know that you have those and you don't have to try to scramble to grab them when you have those few precious moments. Additionally, if you live in an area that is prone to evacuations, say you live in hurricane areas or you live in fire areas where you have to worry about uh, fire spreading and having to relocate as forest fires spread, it might be worth it for you to make paper copies of your most important documents like a passport, like deeds to property, like uh, birth certificates for yourself and your kids in the event that you do have to evacuate very quickly. You know that's coming. Those can go back into a storage, you know, a safe or a safety deposit box in the off season, if you will, but you can have some paper copies. Just go ahead and store those in your evacuation kit during the heightened times where you're worried about natural disaster. And the great thing about this is it's totally free. You may choose to pay for an app that has an encrypted service, but other than that, it's totally free for you to digitize or make copies of your most important important documents so you have proof of who you are and what you own in an emergency. All right, my third one has to do with money, although it's not necessarily going to cost you money, it's going to be about how you manage your money, and that is to get on point with both a savings fund and emergency cash. Now, you may not be able to do this all right away, and it might take several months to get to whatever your personal benchmarks are, but I recommend that you really emphasize having a robust savings account. I am gonna fly in the face of many, many financial gurus a la the Dave Ramsey empire and say that $1,000 as an emergency fund is bullshit and isn't going to actually help you with anything. So with that in mind, I think that you need to be looking at having one to three months of your utilities, rent, and grocery budget needs saved in a savings account one to three months. Now that might be a challenge for many people depending upon how much rent is, for example. And you may have to start small and your goal is just one month. If you get laid off, you know you have a one month kind of buffer to pay your rent, your utilities. You know, you're gonna cancel everything. You're gonna cancel your Netflix. You're gonna go down to your cheapest phone plan possible. You're gonna cancel all your subscriptions. You're going to you know, slim down that budget. Uh, but the point is to have just your basic needs covered and to try to have that sitting in a savings account. Now, of course, you may need to dip into that savings account for things like an emergency root canal or a fender bender, so on and so forth. But the point is to have, try to get to one to three months of your most basic needs covered so that in the event of a job layoff, in the event of an emergency, you have some easily accessible liquid assets that can cover your basic needs. Now, the second part of this recommendation is to work on your cash. There are different barometers for how much cash you should have on hand, and certainly you need to adjust for your own personal comfortability having cash in your home. But I suggest that you have enough cash to buy groceries and fuel, so groceries and gas, for one month. If you can get to that point, and of course this would be considering having a slimmer grocery budget, eating out of what pantries you have, um, also that inflation will probably be up if you're in a situation where you are only able to use cash, but having cash on hand to buy groceries for a month and fuel for a month is helpful. It's a good benchmark 
for you. If you are storing cash, you can have a couple of big bills, but you really want to try to keep things in the ones, fives, and tens categories because if something costs $10 but you only have 20s and you're in an emergency situation, you're gonna be spending the 20 because there's not gonna be somebody who can necessarily break your cash into smaller bills. So while you may choose to have a couple hidden hundreds, as my granddad used to call it, he had like a secret $100 bill he used to keep in his, in his bill fold, it will likely be better for you and get you more mileage if you have 20s, 10s, fives, and ones. Those are just going to be able to be used. You're going to be able to, you know, you can use five tens to pay for the same thing as a 50, but if you only need three tens and you have a 50, you're paying the 50. So as many preppers will recommend, when you're storing cash, try to get it in the lowest denomination that is feasible for you. All right, my friends, that is three mostly free ways that you can start being prepared, not just for emergencies, but for everyday life. You never know when there could be rain water damage that harms your property and you want to make sure that you are covered for it with your insurance. You never know when you might just have to peace out or you are stuck in a you know catastrophe around town and you need to prove who you are and you need to prove who your kids are and you want to be able to access all those important documents and you never know when you might need to pay for your gas with cash because there's a crisis coming and if you can get in there and throw your money down you don't have to wait uh for folks who are using credit card if internet is backed up or broken so Think about it in, as a way of being prepared for hiccups. This isn't doomsday prepping, though all of these things, except maybe the insurance, would help in an apocalyptic setting. The point is that we are prepping for real everyday emergencies, things that can cause hiccups, things that can cause headache and heartache, and we're prepared in advance for them. And if that bigger, more serious situation comes, you can stay calm and confident because these little pieces have been creating a great foundation this whole time. Friends, comment down below and let me know, do you have some other free or cheap ways that we can be prepared for everyday hiccups that also help us prepare for big calamities? I'd love to see what you have down in the comments. And as always, you can find me on Instagram and in the Facebook group. All the links are down below. You can also find the link to my course, The Ultimate Food Storage in a Weekend. This is a course designed to help you walk through creating one month of food storage in just one weekend from planning out everything, creating your shopping list, shopping, storing the whole nine yards, one weekend for one month of food storage. It's a great deal and I hope that you will check it out down there. I'm so excited to be bringing you everyday preparedness content that is free of the fear mongering and the conspiracies. And I hope my friends, if you have found this video useful, share it to a friend, share it to a Facebook group or other social media platform. Let others know that there is a fear free emergency preparedness resource out there for them. And until the next video, happy prepping.